Hey everyone, welcome back to Pajama Crafts where I do crafts in my pajamas. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sarah and I have a ton of spring DIYs for you guys today. Some of them are Dollar Tree DIYs, others are not, but they are all very affordable. And I'm really excited to show you guys what I created for this video. Also, a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and we will talk more about that later. But for right now, let's just jump right into the video. So for this first DIY, I'm starting out with this foam wreath from Dollar Tree wreath form. And then I actually had these purple flowers from a garland that came in a Michael's grab bag. So it was like almost zero dollars because I got so many things in there. Um, but I just started taking it apart. And I got this probably a year or two ago. I never knew what to do with it. Um, but I just pulled all the pieces off. There's three flowers on each little piece. And I just hot glued them all the way around. It took a while because I had to hold them down for quite a while since my glue was so hot. Maybe if you had a low temp glue gun, it would be faster, I would think. Because I had to wait for it to dry. And also, it was melting a little bit as I did it. So I would suggest a low temp if you have one. But I just filled up the whole entire thing with flowers until it was as full as I liked it. And that's all I did for this one. Super simple and easy. And I think it turned out so pretty. Like I said earlier, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes, including illustration, design, video, photography, and tons more. So whether you're a beginner or a pro, it's the perfect learning environment. There's no ads to break your focus. And they're always launching new classes to help you learn new skills and stay creative. I'm personally interested in their classes for hand lettering. You guys know that I love to try my hand at hand lettering. Sometimes it turns out really awesome. Sometimes it's a major fail, but I would love to learn more about that. I would also love to work on my drawing and painting. You guys know that is not my forte. But lately, I've really been enjoying Thomas Frank's class on productivity for creatives. He gives very practical advice on how to tap into your creativity on a set schedule as opposed to uh, just whenever <laughs> creativity or, you know, inspiration randomly strikes. It's been super helpful for me as someone who is trying to juggle the responsibilities of being a stay-at-home mom and a creative influencer, so I highly recommend that class. Members get access to thousands of classes with video lessons, hands-on projects, and feedback from a community of millions. It's less than $10 a month with the annual subscription and the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of the premium membership so you can explore your creativity too. Now let's jump back into the next DIY.
So for this next DIY, I actually have this basket that uh, was given to me by my grandma with a little teddy bear in it when I was a little girl. So I've had this forever. Um, and I'm not gluing anything or anything like that so that I don't mess it up in case I want to put the teddy back in it later. But right now, Brie loves that teddy and she sleeps with it and everything. So the basket was just sitting there and I decided to make some good use of it. So I just threw some Dollar Tree moss in here. But I think you can get baskets similar to this at Dollar Tree at Easter time. So you could just spray paint it white and distress it if you want to or whatever color you like. Um, and then, like I said, I just threw in some Dollar Tree moss, and then I had this little uh, bird's nest from Hobby Lobby from like a really long time ago. It came with a bird in it and everything, but I just took that out, and I decided to add a little bit of white Waverly chalk paint, just a little dry brushing to make it, you know, a little more just farmhouse shabby chic looking, and... Um, I really like the look that it gave it. I picked up these little eggs from Dollar Tree and I just tried to pick out the ones that I thought were kind of the lightest in color that would be the easiest to cover with paint. They are covered in glitter. It will go everywhere. <laughs> um, but once you put the paint on, of course it's not going anywhere. I just went ahead and painted right over the glitter. I really like the texture that it leaves on the eggs super easy to pull the little ribbons out and I had this piece of like wire from some old florals that I took the flowers off of and I actually used that to stick my eggs onto to paint them more easily. You could use anything like a, sque a skewer or whatever and I've done it in my hand too. It's really messy but you can wash your hands. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, these only needed one coat of paint since I tried to pick the lighter colors. It covered them just fine. And then I did go ahead and distress them a little bit with some brown chalk paint. Now I have been using the same spring florals from Hobby Lobby from this pick for years now. I just take a few here and there and it comes with so many on there. Their florals are half price a lot of the time so I just go when they're on sale and grab them up. So on to the next DIY. This is probably my favorite from this video, but this is a Dollar Tree DIY. And I just found these little treat bags for Easter at Dollar Tree. And I just am using one for this project, but it comes with several in the bag. I'm just using some stamps that I have from Hobby Lobby. I've had these for years, and I also have this Distress ink. And you can use any ink that you have on hand. This is just what I have. And... I just went ahead and wrote bunny bait on my little tag. This little tag also came from Dollar Tree in a little pack. It's in the scrapbooking area and it comes with a ton. And I love these little tags. I think they're so cute um, for your shabby chic and farmhouse projects. But I just wrote bunny bait on there. And I also used my ink to distress my little bag. You can definitely do tea or coffee staining if you want to and the bag is really cute and rustic already so you don't even have to do that if you don't want to but I kind of like that grungy uh, primitive country look. I don't know what it's called. You guys know but anyway um, yeah so I just went ahead and distressed it quite a bit and then I did have a carrot left over from Dollar Tree from a few years ago that I just poked in the top because I thought that was so cute for a bunny bait. Um, someone did ask me the other day where I got the carrots from because they haven't seen them in years at their Dollar Tree they said and I haven't seen them yet this year but I've only been like one time in the whole year so far so um, I wouldn't be able to tell you if they have them out this year or not, but I did get mine a few years ago and I'm just kind of reusing them for different projects. So I would not be able to tell you, unfortunately. So once I had him as distressed as I liked, I went ahead and took some old stuffing from an old pillow. You can see I'm getting to the end of this one. It was so old and it was really smashed and like matted down. So I just always fluff it up before I use it in my project. And once I had the amount that I liked, I just tied it up with the little uh, jute string that it came with and added that tag to the side. 
pop my little carrot in there and that's all I did for this one and I think he turned out so so adorable. So these next two DIYs are super simple. I had these old pieces of scrap wood on hand and I just decided to paint them with some white Waverly chalk paint. It took two coats and then I did go ahead and take them outside and use my electric sander on them to distress them a little bit. You could use regular sandpaper no problem. I'm just running out of the regular and since I have the electric one on hand it's super easy and quick for me to be able to do that. So that's what I did with these. And then I actually found the little transfers in the Target dollar spot or Bullseye Playground, whatever you call it. And I just thought they were so, so cute for spring. It came with two projects in the pack for $3, which is not a bad price for two projects. I'm just using my transfer tape that I get at Walmart. It's not actually transfer tape. It's just the Duck brand of... Um, contact paper and I just use the clear one. I love this more than Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree often leaves a sticky residue on my project so I go with Walmart. It's a huge huge roll for like five dollars and lasts me forever and it's way more cost effective and but much better quality than Dollar Tree in my opinion. So that's what I use to transfer it. It says in the directions that you can just peel and stick, um, but since I had this on hand, I went ahead and used this because I thought it would make it easier for me than trying to position every piece the way I wanted it. So these were super, super simple projects. So easy to do, um, but turned out really, really pretty in my opinion, and I absolutely love this color too. I think it's gorgeous for spring and yeah, just so, so easy. I just use an old card. I don't even have one of those little scrapers. Don't worry, this is just an old gift card. Um, someone told me you should not be showing your card numbers on the screen, <laughs> but don't worry, it's just an old gift card. Um, but that's what I use to put down all of my Cricut transfers to. <laughs> you don't really need anything fancy. For this next DIY, I have this wreath form from Dollar Tree, and 
it actually has this twine wrapped all the way around it which is really convenient for putting the flowers on I wanted this to look super whimsical and like spring and wild and just all of that nothing like symmetrical or perfect um, so I just used some of these florals that I have from Michaels I got these last year but I really love how it looks kind of scraggly <laughs> um, but I think it's so pretty and I think it goes perfectly with the chicken wire in the frame you could definitely hot glue this I would suggest it if you're gonna leave it the way it is this one came out so so pretty and like I said, I just love those Michaels florals. They always have beautiful, beautiful spring florals. I just got some in my last haul with Brie, and they're just so wild looking, and that's just so beautiful to me. Let me know if this is your style too, or if you are more of like the farmhouse chic or modern farmhouse look. But anyway, on to the next one. I have this more of a shabby chic one that I did, and I kind of wish that I distressed it a little bit more, and you guys might be thinking, like, what? But I just love distressing. If you have been around my channel for any length of time, you know that. But anyway, I just took this um, ornament shape sign that I had got from Dollar Tree a while back and I had used it to make a Christmas sign and I just wanted to repurpose it because I wasn't using it in my home anymore and so I went ahead and ripped everything off and cut off that top piece it's very easy to just kind of score it with a razor blade or exacto knife and then just break it off as you saw that I did there and then you can just cut off the excess very easily with some scissors and then I just had this piece of scrapbook paper on hand just picked a fun spring one that I liked I'm not sure where I got this paper I think it might have been from an online shop so I'm not a hundred percent sure on that I'll try to find it and link it now using one of these dangly heart signs that I got from Dollar Tree for Valentine's Day um, I just went ahead and pulled off one of those hearts and painted the back with this pumpkin color I actually mixed in some white first because I wanted it to be a lot lighter and kind of match the florals on my scrapbook paper so I went ahead and mixed in some white once I had painted that completely I wasn't very happy with the color once it dried um, it was a little darker than I liked and so I thought I would add a little bit more white I tried to do um, kind of like some stripey type detail and I wasn't liking that so I just decided to blend it all in and I absolutely love the effect that it gave it it was almost like kind of streaky looking you'll see um, but I really like it because it looks kind of um, I don't know distressed and shabby chic and old and vintage and all of that good stuff that I like here on my channel and so I think that it turned out really pretty with the paint So I just hot glued that heart down to my circle. I made sure to only put the hot glue where it was going to be touching the circle because I was going to leave this overlapping just a little bit and you can see this is where I covered up that spot that wasn't exactly perfectly round. Um, and then I had these flowers. They're from a ribbon that I get at Hobby Lobby and again you can get those half off. This is a beautiful ribbon and I just cut the flowers apart off of it and hot glued them down. You could add a little distressing to these with that distress ink if you want to and I do that a lot of times. I just didn't think of it this day and looking back I'm like, ugh, I wish I did that but that's okay. I think it still came out really pretty. 
And then next I just went ahead and used some more of my stamps that I have from Hobby Lobby and that Distress Ink and I wrote Spring on the Heart. I definitely did not try to make it perfect. I just wanted it to be kind of more playful and like somebody just kind of slapped it on like not a professional or anything like that and so I did not try to make it in a perfectly straight line or anything I think that's kind of key for the shabby chic vintage um colonial what is this stuff called mixed media there's so many names and I never know which one my stuff is I just like it <laughs> For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I picked up this little mason jar type cup with the handle and just painted it with some white Waverly chalk paint. Took two coats and then I just decided to distress it a little bit. I don't know what happened to my footage, but I actually had a little um, paper scrapbook cutout of a flower that I wanted to Mod Podge on there and that's what I did and that footage just disappeared so just know that I did that it just came in a scrapbook. I just decided to take some Dollar Tree jute twine and tie it around the top and then just wrapped it around a few times and tied it again. I like to do that as often as I can so I don't waste my hot glue um, because I go through a lot of hot glue and <laughs> any time that I can save myself a penny I will do so. So I just went ahead and tied it on there. No need for hot glue in this situation. <laughs> and then I took some Dollar Tree florals and put them in the jar. Um, at least that's what I did here in the video and then once I went to stage it I changed it out for some Michaels ones I think both look really pretty but I think that the Michaels florals just kind of get take it to another level and it just looks so beautiful and shabby chic and you guys know that I love that so let me know if you like this style as well and I will keep doing it. For this next Dollar Tree project, I have this from Dollar Tree. I actually made a different DIY with it last summer maybe and it said home with a little starfish and I just took that off and went ahead and painted over the whole thing only this time I'm using the inside I'm just using some white Waverly chalk paint and I just did two coats to cover the whole entire thing but again just using some of those Michaels florals that I had on hand and then I actually had a beautiful pink rose from Hobby Lobby and they are starting to make these beautiful florals that feel like real flowers I don't know how like I don't know how that's a thing, but they really look and feel like real ones, like on the top of the petals. The bottom, you can tell, is not, but the top, it feels and looks like a real flower, and I don't know how it's possible. Like, it's so soft and velvety, not velvety, I don't know. Anyway, I had this on hand because I used it to make a flower wand for Brie for our wedding but then I did go ahead and do something else that matched our colors a little bit better and so I just decided to use this in here and I think it turned out so so pretty it's like not a sign there's nothing anything to it except for the flowers in the box and I just think that I don't know simple but really pretty and I just like how it turned out and I'll stop rambling now. So on to the final DIY. This little wreath I found in um, my grandparents house when we were going through their things before selling the house and um, I took quite a few things that were like just craft supplies that they had on hand or different decor. They had some really awesome stuff, but this little guy was just falling apart and he was very cheaply made and he was just completely, 
he was done for. So I decided to take him off and revamp this little wreath. I did go ahead and save that blessings sign at the top. It's a little wooden piece and I thought I could probably use that in another DIY later, but it's just on there with a little bit of wire and so it was really easy to take off. There was some hot glue on the front of the wreath, so I just flipped it over and used the back. But anyway, once I had everything taken off of this wreath, I used some old florals that I had from Michaels and Hobby Lobby. So I just pulled those right off of there and hot glued them down and actually Added a little bit of greenery. I have some lambs here from Walmart. Those are just two dollars, I think, per bunch, and comes with quite a bit on there. And I just pulled a few pieces off and used that, and then also a few random stragglers from uh, Michaels. That was also part of my wedding florals. Absolutely love the colors. Just feels fresh and bright and. I'm really enjoying that right now. It was super, super cold here in Nebraska for a while. A couple of weeks ago, it was down in the negatives for a little while. And it's finally up in the 70s this week. And we are absolutely loving it. We're going outside every day and doing chalk and all of that good stuff. And I don't have any pictures or video of Brie at the end of this video just because I didn't really have any more um, from since the last time. But I did post two videos of her helping me with hauls. So if you're missing her at the end of this video, just look back at my last two videos. Um, she's in the whole thing on those. <laughs> guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIYs like these if you made it to the end of this video let me know by putting your favorite emoji down below that reminds you of spring I do have all of my social media linked down in the description so make sure to go follow me on all my other accounts if you want to I also have a Facebook group where you guys can share all of your beautiful creations I love to see what you guys are working on so make sure to go and join my group on Facebook as well. But don't forget to check out Skillshare also down in the description. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.